Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel as we once again do something I wasn't really planning on that much, but the idea popped into my head and now it's too cool to ignore. So, uh, I bet you're wondering where I've been uh, for the past little bit. And um, it's the, the answer to that question is both simple and complicated. Complicated and as to how I got there, I don't know. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm going to stop messing around. Uh, I was literally just uh, too distracted and too lazy to make videos, but now uh, I decided we're going to go on a trip. That's right. I'm actually going to play as myself. <laughs> I'm watching too many shows. I'm playing as myself. Um, but whenever I play as myself, I don't really like to randomize a world that I'm in. I like to play in a world that's already there, hence where I've gone. And where did I go? Uh, well, it's this nice little, uh, it's this nice little fantasy setting uh, where nothing bad ever happens. Called the Domains of Dread. That's correct. Let's get started. It all started on a work day, like any other. I was driving the recycle truck through the city that I normally do on a route like any other, and we've been having pretty um, unpredictable weather in Utah, to say the least. So. I was doing my doing my thing, and I, I didn't really think too much of it when a, uh, a big old gray cloud blew in, and uh, it brought with it a ton of snow. The problem was, um, it got to the point where I couldn't see very far. In fact, I couldn't even see more than ten feet out from the truck. So obviously, I, I stopped and I, I got out. And I wanted to take stock of where I was, and it was remarkable just how thick the this fog was. It was unreal. So I go to try and find the curb because I, I want to know, uh, I just wanted to know where the boundaries of the street was, you know. So I'm going out there and I start hearing somebody yell off in the distance. Um, I figure, oh my gosh, somebody's hurt. They're in the fog. So, I mean, what are we going to do? Uh, I mean, obviously I, dashed, I, I dashed out there because I didn't... Uh, I didn't want them to be just out there by themselves. I figured we could call the cops or something like that. But the farther I went, the more I noticed that things were getting kind of weird. Um, I didn't remember seeing all those trees there. And uh, all of a sudden, where'd the road go? And by the time I finally reached who was yelling a bunch, I saw that it was some guy who uh, he stepped right out of some Hammer horror film. He was dressed uh, sort of like old some old Slavic outfit, I guess, if I could call it that. He was on the back of a cart and he was fighting off a bunch of wolves with a staff. And uh, I figured, I mean, this, this guy needs, he needs some help. So I, I pick up a stick and together we managed to, uh, we managed to drive off the wolves. Now, uh, of course, I was very confused by this time, so I, I turned to him to ask a question, but he was he was very grateful that I was able to help him out. And uh, he told me this guy's name was Sergei Fedorov, something like that. Uh, anyway, Sergei, before I could ask him where I was, Sergei told me that he had just come from this place called Barovia. Now, I, uh, I, I knew what Barovia was, and so I thought it was like just, just like a LARP going on out here. What, why am I in these trees? I didn't, I don't remember seeing any woods nearby. But Sergey explained that he was going, um, he was actually crossing the border South into a place called Kartikas. Now I, I knew I, I had heard the name Kartikas somewhere. It was in the, it was in the book. I just threw on the table, but I couldn't remember a whole ton about it. And, uh, I mean, obviously I couldn't see any of the, the road anywhere. The fog had let up a little bit. And by the time I could see any further out, I was definitely not where I had started at all. So I, I turned to Sergey and I said, you, you know, I, I think, uh, I think I should go with you. I'm, I'm really lost. Uh, and he says, I mean, I, I was clearly definitely not from around there cause I'm running around in a, in a high vis t-shirt. So he figured, yeah, this guy's probably lost. So. Uh, anyway, we ended going south uh, into Kartikas, I suppose. Uh, really heavily forested area. There's wolves everywhere. It's, it's a miracle we weren't attacked again. But uh, we get to this place called uh, we get to this place called Arnberg, which is this really small town on the road. And 
uh, from there, I mean, that's, that's where we're, uh, that's where we're going to start here is this little town called Arnberg. So for reference, uh, we are going from Barovia into Kartikas along the Narav river. The town that I brought up called, uh, Arnberg is actually made up. I, I made that one up. It's not actually in here or any of the lore, but they don't flesh out a whole lot of the towns, just kind of the, the main ones here of Scald and Harmonia. So, uh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna start off in Arnberg, and along the way, uh, Sergey is gonna tell me that he's actually a merchant who's been operating out of Barovia for a little bit now. Ultimately, he is going to the township of Skald because he wants to trade some wares, which I've gotten a look at in the back of his uh, in the back of his wagon. Uh, so. Our basic equipment is going to come from the fact that he was uh, grateful to us for helping him. So he's going to he's going to outfit us with some local clothing so we don't stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, the class I've chosen for this is magic user because I really like wizards and casting spells is really cool. And uh, yeah, I realize that's going to make it a little bit hard for us, you know, because we're going to be squishy and all that. But I'm actually okay with that. I plan to do a, a lot more role play with this and uh, hopefully not as much combat, but uh, it is uh, it is the domains of bread. The domains of bread. Oh, <laughs> I almost said domains of bread. Um, unfortunately, we're not in the domains of bread. That sounds delicious. Instead, we're in the domains of dread and combat is known to happen. Uh, somewhat regularly, uh, particularly horrifying combat. So let's get started where we are in Arnberg. Let me get something to represent that really quick. Welcome to Arnberg. Like any other day in the Domains of Dread, it's a gloomy one with kind of a, a churning sea of gray clouds above us. The, the, the township itself kind of uh, melted out, if that makes any sense, materialized out of the fog as we were, uh, as we were walking up the muddy road. And we, um, uh, we entered through the, through the log gates past the guardsmen who, uh, didn't seem too phased by our presence here. Um, Sergei tells me there's not very many people actually living in Arnberg. There's maybe nearly, uh, I think there's nearly a thousand uh, as far as cities go, that's fairly small. Uh, but, I mean, I suppose Arnberg is barely that. But as you can see, uh, here's me. I'm following Sergei, and he's got his trusty horse uh, with all of his wares in the back. Uh, when, I, when we come in here, um, I at first make the mistake of thinking that this is Scald, and uh, I was wondering what else we're going to be doing here. But he informed me that Scald is actually yet another... Uh, what did I see that was? That was more like 15, 20 miles by the reckoning of the map. So <clears throat> we're actually going to be stopping here overnight. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I've had some stuff in my throat. Um, what we do know about Cardicus is that it is a heavily forested region infested completely with wolves, both normal sized and those of abnormal size. Uh, he, uh, he seems to pay some special respects to that statue, which, uh, I asked him what that is. He says that that's a statue of Ezra. I, I don't know what that is. So, uh, he'll probably have to explain that to me later. Uh, but we we make our way to the place he intended to stay, where he's going to lock up some of his uh, some of his equipment, and we're going to see if there's uh, anything we can learn around Arnberg, just kind of about about what I should do from here. Now, of course, mechanically, I'm a wizard who doesn't know any spells yet, because uh, I mean I don't know how to cast magic in in this world, so I'm going to have to figure out how to get something like that. Uh, as per the situation, we're just going to kind of rule that somehow I, I have these strange, uh, arcane formulae that have started bouncing around in my head. I don't know what that's all about, but I should probably find some place to write that down. 
The Inn and Tavern is comfortable enough. It, like everything else here, is made out of wood. And I sit down with Sergey, and uh, we talk a little bit about uh, where I where I say I came from, which, of course, he doesn't understand. Because, uh, I mean, how could he? I mean, I, I mean, just warped in from somewhere else? That's crazy talk. So as we're in here, and I'm sitting here with... Uh, um, with Sergey, I think what I'm going to do, like, as if we're uh, doing a solo game at any other time, I think I'm just going to roll for things to happen. So we're going to say, does anything happen while we're in here? Because we're just kind of in a travel montage right now because we're just going to, uh, we're on our way to Scald. So anything happen while we're on our way there? Yeah. So that's a yes. So let me see uh, what happens whilst we're sitting in here and uh, I have to... Uh, <laughs> I have to stop myself from looking too strange because I'm, I'm kind of freaking out inside. Well, all that really happened was a non-combat encounter where a cardigan merchant attempt to uh, attempted to sell me something, seeing as I looked kind of, uh, look kind of wide-eyed, like I didn't know where I was. So she figured, oh, do you want to? Uh, actually, I think is she going to sell me something useful? Is it like a is it like a weapon? Uh, yeah, actually, it looks like she wants to sell me something. Well, I don't have proficiency with a lot of stuff as a magic user. Uh, although I, I suppose that's not, that wouldn't actually stop me from being able to pick something up and use it. I would just get a penalty to using it, right? So let's take a look at the equipment in here, and I can roll to see what she's trying to sell me. Yeah, let's say it's a melee weapon. Let's roll uh, my big giant D20. And we will see what she's trying to sell me. We got, that's a nine. A spear. Yeah, I'm down with a spear. Uh, I think I get like a minus four to use it or something. I think that's the first edition rule. I'm not proficient with it. Uh, but I mean, I'm I'm down, but I don't have any money. And I really doubt that Sergey is going to get it for me. Although, actually, uh, let me roll something really fast. Uh, what's a three? No. <clears throat> I was going to think, actually, for story purposes, it would really work out. I helped Sergey with the whole wolf thing. I think, uh, I think I'm going to act as his bodyguard for a while. It would be a good way to earn a little bit of money. So he'd say, like, look... I'll get you that spear if you use it to protect uh, to protect me. So instead of saying, "Hey, you should get somebody who's trained," I'm going to say, "Yeah, okay, <laughs> I'll take I'll take the spear, man." So sure, I've got a spear. I have a, a penalty to use it, or I, I guess I can house rule that, but whatever. Spear, d6. I like getting weapons. So that's pretty much all that happens here, and we're going to stay here overnight, and we'll keep going towards scald in the morning uh, and i'm gonna try and get some sleep as you can see they've got a couple rooms available in the upstairs so we're gonna take kind of this two bedroom and uh i'm gonna try and get some sleep uh, i'm gonna see if i can roll for that yeah i'm, I'm gonna roll to see if i can sleep i'm just kind of doing a this is sort of the beginning before a lot of the adventure stuff happens uh no actually i'm having a very hard time sleeping in the morning, we leave Arnberg. We continue heading south on the road towards Skald. So let's see if we get any encounters for hanging out on the road like this. As we're walking along, that's a four. That's a yes, but. I assume that means yes, but it's a non-combat encounter. So... Let's think about, uh, let's talk about Cardacas for a second. So what it says in the book about Cardacas is that it is a heavily forested region that's infested with a lot of wolves. So what are some non-combat encounters we could have out here? I suppose we could have fellow travelers. That seems like the most obvious, for, or the most obvious thing. Um... Yeah, that's what it says here. Cardacas is a heavily forested domain with very few settlements in the rugged foothills of the Balanox. That's a that's a mountain range. <clears throat> the hills are riddled with caverns, both small and large. Fog is common in the low areas where we are, 
rising from the soil as the afternoon sun begins to wane. The brush is dense and the ground is rocky. The way through the trees is twisted. When straying from a road or clearing, riders on horseback barely move faster than a man on foot. When the fog sets in, riding off trail becomes impossible, and the riders must lead their mounts while clearing branches aside with an outstretched hand. Luckily, we are on a road. You can't uh, can't see it, but we're on a road. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's about most of what we're seeing here. It's just some of the environment. So now I need to roll. Does this mean this is a is this a hostile combat encounter? No. Okay. Well, let's take a look at what I can generate for that. Okay. So it says we actually we encounter another traveling merchant, uh, which is great. He says it says that his stock is fairly normal. Some of the stuff in there looks magical. Uh and since uh, since our guy here is paying me to be a bodyguard, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy just a blank book off of this guy. So does he have one of those? Yeah, that's a four. So he does have a blank book. That's what I'm going to take. So when we stop finally, I'm going to record some of these spells that are in my head, and I'll roll to see how many there are. And these, of course, are going to be first-level spells. So that's a cool thing to find on the road. And with that, it looks like our character creation portion is finally complete. Uh, I rolled and I found that I know six first level spells. Five of those come from the White Box Core Book, and one of them comes from White Box Gothic, because I thought that would make a lot of sense, seeing as where we're at. The spells we know there are Detect Magic, Light, Protection from Chaos, which I believe will prove very useful. Read magic, sleep, which will also be very useful, and summon fog. This means to, to some degree I'm almost I'm almost summoning the uh, the mists of Ravenloft and that just sounds really cool. So when we pick this up again, we are gonna get to Scald and then stuff is really gonna kick off. Cause Scald is like the main Cardican city. Um and I'm excited to do this. I uh, I wanted to I I wanted to kind of do almost a uh, sort of a portal fantasy thing for a little bit, and uh, I kind of wanted to play as I wanted to play as myself because I thought it'd be interesting. I know that's kind of a silly thing to do uh, for most people, but but you know I'm okay with being silly a little bit. Um. So yeah, this uh, this is the start of our our uh, run around in the domains of dread. I'm excited to see what we can accomplish or are we going to die hideously? In which case uh, the channel might be in a little bit of trouble because uh, I don't know who's going to run it when I'm dead. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens next time when we pick up in scald. <laughs>